Good morning, everybody. My name is Sarah. It's pretending to snow outside, which I guess is the only appropriate weather condition to reflect the mood of having to return to work on Monday afternoon. It would be very nice for us all to be able to just get paid to do nothing all day. However, the reality is we all have to work. Well, almost everybody. this sandwich a lot and I'm wondering what your favorite thing to make for breakfast is what kind of helps you to get going with your day uh, what helps you with training um, they say breakfast is the most important meal of the day I'm not all the together motivated to have breakfast all the time but usually when I've got a ride that I'm gonna do in the afternoon before work it's a good idea to, to have a breakfast especially if you're gonna put in a hard effort you don't eat on the bike or something like that I've noticed that if I don't, I tend to get a little bit upside down on sugar later in the day while I'm trying to work. Because um, I don't like to eat right afterwards, I like to kind of give it some time and then I'm getting ready for work and maybe I'm just grabbing something small and I'm not even really replacing the sugars or the glyco glycogen stores so you just don't feel well and you don't recover well. So let me know what you guys do for breakfast to kind of get you fueled for the day or what you do for your first meal of the day. Is it breakfast? Is it lunch? What's your kind of go-to um, breakfast item that helps you get you fueled? I've made mention in my videos maybe once or twice before that I have dealt with something that is called uh, PVCs or premature ventricular contractions and it's basically um, the best way to describe it is almost like an extra beat uh, from the ventricle area of your heart and it almost sounds like or feels like there's a pause in your heartbeat like it, it sounds it feels to you like it's it's actually beating it's just kind of not able to be discerned um, from you sitting there or kind of feeling your chest but when you, they actually test your heartbeat you're not really missing a beat you have an extra beat but that interruption causes the next beat to come on so hard it felt like there was a pause in between and I never had these at least not to my knowledge until about two years ago and then they just came on out of the blue and I was having thousands and thousands of these per day now these are extremely benign as far as uh, you know what what they will tell you in most cases now obviously they could be indicative of something else but if you have an, a normal healthy heart and you have no structural abnormalities or no um, hereditary issues with your heart they're completely normal and they're really common for women in their 30s however when they came on out of the blue like that uh, when I was like 31 years old and I'd never had them before and I was an athlete and I was very sensitive to them and unlike a lot of people I could feel every single one of them and it was interrupting my life I failed to accept that uh, you know countless visits to a cardiologist and my uh, primary physician and even at one point uh, an immediate care center because I was terrified um, I, I failed or, or just kind of refused to accept that well this is what it is this is what I'm going to have to deal with so I tried a number of different things um, to try to cure my condition because I felt like I just wasn't going to be able to deal with it long term and I, I tried a lot of stuff that was put forward in uh, forums and, and people who said hey this works for me or this is what aggravates it or you know I eat this and this is what causes it or could be caused by some kind of stomach upset so on and so forth and I finally stumbled on something that actually makes them go away and that was mega dosing with magnesium. Uh, I was taking about 1,500 to 2,000 milligrams of magnesium every single day and within two days of even starting this they had drastically reduced and in five days they completely disappeared. I couldn't even believe it and I had countless blood panels. I was not deficient in any vitamin by any stretch of the imagination. 
However, I think if you've done any kind of research into uh, human anatomy and physiology, you'll learn that a lot of the times when we put forward um, you know, averages or normal ranges for blood values for vitamins and minerals, that is a national average and isn't necessarily what the body needs to thrive um, and maybe isn't the appropriate amount for you as a person. So uh, every time that I feel these kind of just come back, like I've had a couple flutters in the last uh, couple days, what I will do is I will grab some magnesium. So I will grab a combination of, of two different types of magnesium. Magnesium citrate, which if you've ever heard of magnesium citrate, it could really make you go to the bathroom. Uh, people use it to cleanse, but it is a very absorbable type of magnesium. So what I'll do is I will take a combination of this and then standard magnesium to get up to about 1500 to 2000 milligrams. That way I'm not in the bathroom all day long, but I have a very absorbable uh, form of magnesium. There's also some liquid versions that I have tried. It's just tough for me to get down. I don't know why. But if you have something like a PVC, it's pretty harmless to try. I can't say that this is going to cure your issue, but I guess it's common in athletes as well to get these extra beats. And if they're really bothersome to you, it might be worth them giving uh, or you giving this a try. Because what's going to happen with magnesium is if you just take too much of it, you're going to go to the bathroom and, and you're going to pee the rest of it out. Um, I mean, short of maybe taking a whole bottle, which you probably aren't going to feel very good, um, you're not going to really overdose on magnesium or do anything super harmful for your body. Obviously, I am not a doctor. You should consult your physician before, you know, doing anything that you think might be a harm to your body. But it's something that I tried. It's something that works. It's something that if I felt them come back for a few days, I will kind of go on this regimen and they completely disappear. I don't know why they come on. Uh, I don't know if it, it's just my body gets below a certain level of magnesium. Um, I should take it every day just kind of as a prophylactic to the issue, but sometimes you, people just forget. Uh, I'll go on these, uh, these stints where I'm really good about taking multivitamins or taking something every single day. Uh, mostly, you know, magnesium, vitamin D, B12, some of those things that are a little bit more difficult to get in your diet. And then obviously getting a little bit of boost from the occasional multivitamin, you know, it can't hurt. But at any rate, uh, give this a try. If it's something that you are dealing with or have dealt with, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work for you. But I am not the only person who has claimed that magnesium has completely eradicated or at least vastly reduced the intensity of uh, these PVCs and I believe PACs as well which is uh, premature arterial contractions which is from the other chambers of the heart um, basically your upper and lower chambers are causing these extra beats um, this works for that as well for many people so just thought I would share that as something interesting you know as a, you know an athlete this is something that really terrified me for a number of months and I didn't know how to deal with it and now I just like oh yep I feel them I recognize it I know what that is I know it's not gonna hurt me but it's obnoxious so I'm gonna take care of it so I hope that was helpful. Let me know in the comments below if you or anybody in your family or friends has ever dealt with any kind of uh, heart arrhythmia. Um, this really doesn't even qualify as an arrhythmia very much, but it can be very scary regardless of what kind of arrhythmia that you have. So let me know if you have any experience or know of anybody uh, close to you that has experience with uh, some heart issues that could be very anxiety driving. What you doing? Excuse me. Excuse me. You make something for lunch? Or are you just gonna lick the cornstarch off all the bags? Get down! Bad cats. Get down. You live down there! So another thing that helps PVCs and PACs is actually kind of counterintuitive, and that's a higher heart rate. So being aware of uh, these extra beats is exaggerated at a lower heart rate. So my resting heart rate is somewhere between usually 48 and 52 beats per minute. And if I'm kind of sitting at my desk or somewhat engaged, it might be right at about 60 beats per minute. So. 
if there's a, an extra beat within not that many beats per minute, I am more aware of it. So one of the things that actually helps to alleviate PVCs um, is exercise. Uh, before I found the magnesium trick, I would actually, once I kind of said, you know what, screw it. I can't be afraid of my life. I've got to, you know, get on the bike and I got to ride. And if I hit the deck, I guess so be it type of thing, right? So I would get on the bike and I would ride and I would notice that when I got my heart rate up 120 beats per minute plus, they were either completely gone or I wasn't feeling them. And when I did some research on this, it was actually that they would go away because uh, the extra beat or that signal was interrupted by the fact that there were so many beats per minute, there was no chance for that you know, electrical or structural interference to happen in the heart. I mean, the heart is, is almost like an electrical current pushing blood through the body. So one of those things that you can try to do is overcome a little bit of the anxiety of having those PVCs or PACs and get yourself engaged in some exercise. Even if you're not ready to do high intensity exercise, go for a walk. Try to go for a brisk walk. Get your heart rate up to 110 beats per minute if you can. Or go for a really easy spin on the bike, even if it's just going up to the store. Getting your heart rate up for a prolonged period of time can actually help stabilize some of that otherwise instability that you can see in the PVCs. So I'm gonna do that today because obviously the magnesium isn't going to kick in in about an hour. So I'm gonna get a moderate Zwift ride in before I go to work for about an hour. And in all likelihood, the symptoms are pretty much gonna go away uh, for the remainder of the day for, or for the next at least few hours so that I don't have to be cognizant of some goofy fluttery feelings in my chest. got a package for me. Today's ride interruption was brought to you by the United States Postal Service. Making his cameo appearance on today's vlog. Super excited about today's package. in the world's most frustrating box. There's more tape on this box than there is in the world. So I lost my Oakleys uh, a couple weeks ago. I don't know where or how, but uh, got a replacement pair that are, might be more enjoyable than the originals. How obnoxious are these? I uh, actually bought these used from somebody who wore them once and got them for about uh, less than half of the price they would be. They had the jade iridium lens with them uh, and then the slate lens that comes with them and all the original accoutrements, including the case, the original box, the ear sock protection. I need another pair of sunglasses like I need a hole in the head. All right, I gotta shower and get my ass to work. So I'm a person who likes to have the temperature of their drinks um, to either extreme. So I like my hot beverages extremely hot and I like my cold be beverages pretty much right at that neutralization point of ice. I don't necessarily have ice in all my beverages but I like it to be that cold straight out of the fridge just a touch above freezing. It's actually rather mild out now. It's probably somewhere around 40 degrees, low winds and that fake snow shit seems to have stopped. 
So the irony of me talking about drinking coffee in the same vlog as me talking about PVCs is not entirely lost on me. However, in my particular case, coffee or caffeine is not an irritant. Uh, I tried removing that and bringing it back into my daily routine when I was trying to figure all of this heart stuff out. And the caffeine really made no difference, and I really don't drink that much of it. Um, this will be probably the only caffeine I have all day. But what I did want to talk about is uh, the temperature of the coffee. I use this here. This is a Thermos brand uh, mug. This keeps uh, coffee hot for, I think, up to 8 to 10 hours. I bought it a couple years ago, but it works really well. Uh, because I tend to throw a lot of the coffee I make away because once it gets about halfway uh, finished, uh, it's not hot enough for me anymore. And I don't really like putting things in the microwave. Occasionally I will, but it usually just ruins the flavor, boils over, makes a huge mess. So I just prefer to keep it hot. So that cup works great for me. And then for cold beverages, I use a Yeti. Uh, I think it's like a 30 ounce cup. And um, I just, uh, I really like both of those things. Those are things that, they're, you know, they're expensive cups. Like when you look at this stuff, that particular mug I think was $30 and the Yeti was $40. But I think about it in terms of this. Yeah, I spend that money, but I will be able to keep this stuff for years. It's made of a good construction. Um, the Yeti is like stainless steel, so you're not going to really break it unless you run it over. Uh, you may have to replace the lid, but they sell those separately, so uh, there's a possibility of replacing the, the lid. And, and this kind of the same thing, you know, the rubber is held up, both hand washed and in the dishwasher. It's got a robust lid. So uh, it's a worthwhile expenditure for me to buy uh, one of these insulated mugs because I will use them a lot and they will last me forever and I will get more enjoyment out of my drinks and I won't waste them at much, uh, as much. So I guess they'll just pay for themselves. But uh, I'll leave a link for uh, both if I can find the Thermos mug and the Yeti. Um, I'll leave an Amazon link below in case you guys kind of want to see uh, what I use to keep my uh, just everyday drinks hot and cold. Into the night, I raise my hand and to the fire but it's no use cuz you can nice sign Wendy's so today was an utterly shit day on the way to work i get pulled over by a police officer forget this my bike rack he told me my bike rack was obstructing my license plate although you can reasonably read the license plate from behind my vehicle i live in a village where i can't sneeze without passing four police officers and nobody has ever said in four years that the same vehicles had the same bike rack on it. Nobody has said a word. It's a bike rack that's dealer installed from a New York State certified inspection stick, uh, station. And nobody has ever said that your bike rack is illegal. This guy literally just had a bone to pick with somebody. He was a real prick when he pulled me over and it was almost like he was goading me into getting in an argument with him. But that of course started my day. Then I just barely make it on time to work and then I have to deal with the stress of being rushed and then finding out that my counterparts didn't do their job today so I had to clean that up and it's just been another uh, altogether just shit day so I'm glad to be rid of it I appreciate everybody watching my videos and I will catch you in the next one <laughs>